Mars. The Red Planet. For generations, scientists and dreamers have looked to the skies and wondered, what would life be like to live there? That's why an intrepid group founded the Mars Desert Research Station. But it's not here. It's here. And when you look at the beautiful Martian-like landscape of Hanksville, Utah, you can understand why. Among the red rock, you'll find a stark white building called the Hab. A sign marks the spot where Earth ends and Mars begins. So to see what life would be like, I spent a day in the shoes of those astronauts who inhabit it. My name is Arvind Karthikeyan. My name is Noah Mugan. My name is Rashad Pandey. And my name is Christina Mannix. My name is Avery Abramson. My name is Prakruti Raghunara, and you can call me Pari. Um, I am Crew 99, the Bevo Knots commander. Pari and her crew are the 299th mission to crew this space. They call themselves the Bevo Knots from the University of Texas, Austin. We have a variety of physicists, astronomers, and engineers on the crew. Um, and essentially, when you're applying to be an astronaut for NASA, those are some of the majors you need. All of them isolated from the world. Just as life would be a space flight away. This facility is actually the largest and most well-known research facility in terms of isolation. The realism definitely is what makes this experience a lot well, not even close to home, but, well, furthest away from home. For this crew, each day starts with a plan and scientific goals to be met. Then, the fun begins. Preparing for what's called an EVA. Every time we go out for EVAs, we plan well in advance. Yeah. Can you turn on the airfoils? Um, we plan the night before as to where we're going. Test, test, I can hear. I can hear you. Map out the coordinates, make sure all the suits are charged up. Timer starts. Because if you were actually on Mars and you didn't plan in advance, you would die. Okay, it has been five minutes. You are free to leave the airlock. Over. This particular mission is to gather samples. So into the rovers, aptly named Curiosity and Opportunity, we go. Traveling across the Martian landscape, sometimes you encounter some Martians. But for the sake of the mission, they keep on course. Walking through the desert landscape, they look for anything out of the ordinary. So when you have this like reddish thing, it's actually a very similar chemical composition to materials found on Mars. And take to the sky to see what's around. With the scans of the air and several rock samples in hand, it was time to return. It went well. We actually got a lot of samples. Decompression to breathable air and all. All right, they're left secure. Your timer starts now. But inside, the simulation doesn't end. It was like somewhat of a shock, at least the first one or two days. Plan your showers, plan your cooking, plan your water usage. We have limited power wattage we can use per day. Go over a certain wattage with it, everything's going to shut down. Waiting in the airlocks, um, getting comms working. The food, it's all dehydrated food. Food, right? How much water does the food take? and the science becomes paramount. Each member of the crew has their own projects, starting with Rashab and the drone video. With those videos, I can kind of put into the software, which will ma map out a whole bunch of points. A similar program to the one designed here could be used to map the Martian surface. Uh, right now, this is where we are. Down the tunnels sits the science dome. These are all the samples that we've collected throughout one week of EVAs. In here, Pari and Arvidon take samples and analyze them. We want to see if there's any material similarities and microscopic similarities between the two. But it's more than that. Growing radishes. Now that may seem a little weird compared to all the other things that we're doing here, but agriculture on Mars is one of the biggest concerns for people who plan on staying there long term. Noah has used simulated Martian soil, created from studies from real Mars rovers, to grow radishes, and the results speak for themselves. Continuing through the compound, you then come to the two observatories. This is personally the longest time that I've spent at an observatory doing research. Avery and Christina are studying the sun. So we put a mount in here to, that connects to our computer. So we think that this is a little more rare to see because it was during the solar storm. As well as a far away white dwarf star. This is what our actual image truly looks like. <laughs> With all this work, 
Of course, you have to eat. Some sugar, oregano, and bagel. But this isn't like other meals. Freeze-dried egg powder. And that's onions. We spend a lot more time making food than I would have expected uh, because they're all, you know, raw ingredients would be hydrated. And with the unusual ingredients, another crew left behind a cookbook to guide the way. <laughs> right off the kitchen is their living quarters. Uh, it's only 4 by 11 at its widest point. And despite the tight accommodations, it feels like home. Uh, we play card games around the table and stuff like that, so that brings us a lot closer for sure. To close the day, another EVA is scheduled to explore more of the landscape. This time, I joined in for the full experience. So we'll rest in one minute. The cumbersome equipment made for an interesting journey. And I just fell. <laughs> but the incredible scenery and the experience was all worth it. Now that's a view. Yeah. And as the sun set, it's amazing seeing all that goes into one Martian day. And while I get to go home, this crew will wake up tomorrow and do it all over again, potentially seeding the scientific building blocks to a real mission to Mars. I'd say we're all very aspirational in terms of our careers, in terms of how we want to impact the world. We are headed there, whether it's in the next you know, 20 years, the next 200, I think we'll get there eventually. And I think these types of experiments are very important to actually gauge what we can or can't do. And for this crew, that's an opportunity unlike any other. I don't think many people can say that they have done anything similar to this kind of experience. The future is space. Um, we want to be able to explore, we want to be able to figure out what's out there and how we can get there. So I guess the only question left is, would you live on Mars? Is Utah the new Mars? Spencer Joseph. I think so. <laughs> Fox 13 News, Utah.